What's going on guys? Welcome back. Patrick here. Moving on with target profit. We're now going to talk about the sales to achieve a certain target profit. In the video before, we talked about the number of units we have to get to achieve a certain target profit. Now we're going to talk about the target sales. And as we did before, it's all going to derive from that general formula where profit is revenue. Instead of revenue, I'm going to write sales minus variable costs minus the fixed costs. And if you remember from break even, profit was zero, but now that we're going for a certain profit, let's call this target profit here on the left. Then we're going to have sales minus the variable cost. If you remember, again, in break even, we represented this variable cost as the variable cost ratio times the sales minus the fixed costs. And if you remember, the variable cost ratio is basically equal to the variable cost over the sales or over the revenue. You could also look at this from a per unit perspective, right? Variable cost per unit over the sales per unit or the selling price per unit. That ratio is always going to be the same, no matter what the production level is. So we could always get that variable cost, that total variable cost by taking the variable cost ratio, multiplying it by the sales. And so the target sales is this S here in order to achieve this target profit. So we're going to isolate for this. So we're going to bring the fixed cost over. So we'll have the target profit plus the fixed cost equals sales minus variable cost ratio times the sales. Notice we could factor out an S from both of these and we'd be left with one, right? S divided by S is one and the variable cost ratio from that expression. And then dividing both sides by that bracket in order to isolate for that S, we would have the target profit plus the fixed cost over one minus the variable cost ratio. And if you remember, the uh, one minus the variable cost ratio, it's also the contribution margin ratio, right? So that is the formula right there for the target sales in order to achieve a certain target profit. So when we were finding the number of units, it was the same numerator, but the denominator was the unit contribution margin. But when we're trying to find the target sales, it's not the unit contribution margin in the denominators, the contribution margin ratio. So let's show how all this works through an example. And this example, it's going to be pretty tough just as a heads up. So a company sells a product for $70 per unit, direct materials, direct labor, and variable manufacturing overhead is $6, $8, and $5 per unit respectively. When the company sells 2,000 units, total manufacturing overhead and selling costs are 28,000 and 26,000 respectively. If fixed selling costs are 22,000, what is the target sales required for a target profit of $225,580? So lots of information given here. Notice that we're solving for target sales and the formula I introduced before was target profit plus the fixed costs over the contribution margin ratio, right? If we could get all of that, then we can get what the target sales are. And notice out of all of this information given, the only direct thing that we have is this target profit, which is that number right there. Notice that we don't have the total fixed costs given anywhere, right? It's kind of just scattered everywhere. And then the contribution margin ratio, we don't have that directly either. We're going to have to find that. So how are we going to do that? Well, let's find some stuff here. So we know that the selling price per unit, that's given at $70 per unit. Notice we could also get the variable costs per unit. If you remember from videos before, variable cost is going to be made up of what? Direct materials, direct labor, variable manufacturing overhead, and also the variable portion of the period costs. In this case, they're not given as period costs, they're given as selling costs. 
So direct material, direct labor, variable manufacturing overhead, we're given those numbers right beside each other, which is nice. And then the variable selling costs, we are not given them. But we are given the total selling costs when there's a production of 2,000 units. So the total selling costs, let's do this on the side here, it's 26,000. And that's going to happen when there are 2,000 units produced. Right? So that's the total right there. And the total is going to be made up of a fixed portion and a variable portion as well. And notice that we're told that the fixed selling costs are 22,000. Right? So we're given that. And so this is always going to be constant. So if the total selling cost for 2,000 units is 26,000, the fixed portion is 22,000, then what's the variable portion going to be? It's going to be 4,000, right? 22 plus 4 gives us 26,000. And now that we have the total variable portion of the selling costs, we could find out what the variable portion of the selling cost is per unit on a per unit, ba uh, per unit basis. So we could take this 4,000 and divide it by that production level of 2,000. And that gives us $2 per unit. So that right there is the variable selling cost per unit. And that would go over here, right? So that's one of the tricks in this question is being able to get that right there because we were given the total selling costs and the fixed selling costs. So we have to figure out what the total variable selling costs are and then we could take that total variable selling cost divided by the production level to get the uh, variable selling cost per unit which was two dollars. And so here when we add these up we'd get what 14, 19, 21. So the total variable cost per unit is $21. And then um, what about the fixed costs, the total fixed costs? Well, we know part of the fixed cost is going to be the fixed portion of the selling costs, which is $22,000. And there's also going to be a fixed portion for the manufacturing overhead. And what are we given here? We're given the total manufacturing overhead of 28,000 when there are 2,000 units produced. So we're going to have to do the same thing here to find the fixed portion. So now dealing with the manufacturing overhead, we're told that it is 28,000 in total when there are 2,000 units produced. And Again, manufacturing overhead, there's going to be a variable portion and there's going to be a fixed portion. Now, we know that the variable portion, it is $5 per unit. And so, if this is $5 per unit, what's going to be the total variable manufacturing overhead when there are 2,000 units produced? It's going to be 2,000 times 5 which gives us 10,000 in total. And so we know that the fixed portion then has to be 18,000. Right, that's gonna be the fixed variable or uh, the fixed manufacturing overhead. Right, so pretty tricky. You gotta find out a bunch of stuff here. Right, so total variable or um, total manufacturing overhead with 2,000 units produced the variable portion is 10,000, which we got by taking 5, multiplying it by 2,000. And so the remaining portion of the manufacturing overhead is the fixed portion, which is 18,000. And that's going to be part of the total fixed costs. So we're going to add that 18,000 over here. So the total fixed cost is made up of the fixed portion of the selling costs and the fixed portion of the manufacturing overhead. So the total fixed costs are going to be 40.
thousand. And from here, we actually now have all of the information we need to plug in here. The last, actually, the last thing we got to get is this contribution margin ratio. But notice because we have the selling price per unit, variable cost per unit, that's pretty easy to find because we have the selling price per unit, so 70. Then we got the variable cost per unit, which is uh, 21. So the contribution margin or the unit contribution margin is going to be 49. And so the contribution margin ratio is just going to be the contribution margin of 49 over the selling price, 70, which would give us 0 0.7. And so now we can just plug everything in. Target profit, 225,580, plus the fixed cost, 40,000, all over the contribution margin ratio of 0. 0.7. Seven. And when you do that in your calculator, you'd end up getting 379400 And so that is the target sales required to get a target profit of 225580 Right? So that's how you get that. And there's actually other ways to do this too. So um, another way is you could get the break even. Or uh, sorry, not the break even. The um, target number of units. Right, so we know profit equals revenue minus variable cost minus fixed cost. And so if we're going for a target profit of 225,580, the revenue, if we let X equal the number of units that we have to sell, it would be 70X minus the variable cost, which we calculate as 21 per unit. So the total variable costs are going to be 21x minus that fixed cost of 40,000. So you'd bring that over, subtract these, they're like terms, you'd end up with 49x and then divide both sides by 49. You'd end up getting x equaling 5,420. And so that is the number of units that have to be sold in order to make this profit of 225,580. And you could take that number, multiply it by 70, and you would get this, 379,400. So that's another more indirect way to get that. But since we're tar uh, talking about target sales, since I introduced that formula, I wanted to show you how to use that formula in order to get that number right there.